Welcome back to the channel guys, I'm Waterman Gaming. we're back with another video on Harry Potter, Order of Phoenix. This is for review, so if you haven't seen the walkthrough at all, there's a link in the top right hand corner of this video to playlist, please go check that out. With that said, this is the first game of my Nostalgia Revisited series that I have done, so this review is different to all the others I have done in the past. Because this will have two ratings. The nostalgic rating and the rating I would give it if this was my first time actually playing the game completely. So let's start with the release date and the company that made it. It was made by EA in 2007. This game came out alongside the movie if not just before or just after the movie. It's got a lot of the, a lot of the scenes from the movie, but captured as game cutscenes instead of actual scenes directly from the movie, like Lord of Rings: The Two Towers did, or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles did. Um, there are things in this game that is actually also from the books that wasn't in the films, such as mention of peeves. Um, some pranks that the Weasley twins did that wasn't shown in the movies whatsoever. So there's those things as well. Along with some amazing features that you can find at Grimwald Place when you go See there ya. for the second time in the story. I'm not going to spoil what that is, but I hate could not believe it when I heard it, or saw it, should say. Well, a bit of both, really. Right, so this game doesn't feature everything from the movies or books. It's not really that long of a story either. Yeah, sure, you've got a lot of things to do, especially at the beginning, where you have to uh, recruit all of the Dumbledore army members. I really want to go to Hogsmeade. <coughs> all 28 members. Playing? But um apart from that it's not really that long. You can complete it within I don't know, five hours if you're quick. So that's that. Um you can explore the entire castle. Let's just um go rid of that bit. But yeah. You can explore all of the castle by going onto the Mordus map by pushing the back button um, and then push left on the arrow pad to bring up all of your locations as you can see I didn't really explore everything I did want to don't get me wrong I did but that would take too long so I just wanted to get through the story as quickly as possible for you guys so that's exactly what I did and then if you push right on the arrow pad you'll get rid of that tab and then if you push right on the arrow pad again you'll pull up the tasks. These are the tasks I still got to do after completing the game which was find Luna's lost belongings, um, McGonagall's mini quest and then Flitwick's mini quest. The mini quests you don't have to focus on, you do not need to do them at all. If you want to go for it but you do not need to. Right. Uh, you can cast spells, uh, let's show, let's say you don't like the, the positioning of this bench. Wingardium Leviosa. Or if you don't want to do Wingardium Leviosa. Accio. So there are a lot of spells you can do and throughout the game you will find stuff like gobstones, wizard's chest, exploding snap that funny. you can do. All fun mini games. Right now, let's talk about the story a little bit. More. Right, the story, like I said, it's about five hours long. It'll take you from point A to point B of Hogwarts, Grimwald Place, even Ministry of Magic, <coughs> with a lot of duels that you saw in the movies. Some more duels that weren't shown in the movies, but was shown in the book. Which is pretty cool. Um, but apart from that, the story is 
isn't really that long, which is actually good considering this game came out in 2007. And still, today it's one of my favorite games, just because of the nostalgia. Combat, sure, it it can get tough at times, but most of the time it's actually pretty simple, as long as you remember to use Protego every now and then. Right, so that's basically everything I can say about this game without spoiling everything or anything, should say. Now let's talk about the graphics. So, like I said, the game came out in 2007, really made by EA. Keep that in mind, made by EA when EA actually made good games and not terrible games or microtransaction based games. So, graphics are pretty amazing considering it's 2007. And, to be fair, playing on the 360 like I am now, it's actually holding up pretty nicely, I must say. As you can see, we're recording at 60 frames per second. The game is running at 30 FPS. And as you can see, your te the texture in the video is completely different than what I'm actually seeing on my actual screen. So the texture is a lot better in the recording than it is playing, which is actually good. So, I'm very surprised at how well this game has kept up. Sure, I bumped into some bugs where I run into doors meaning to open them, and for some reason the doors get stuck, so I had to run away and then run back into the door and then they would open. Which is perfectly fine. Like I said, it is an old game now, it is over 10 years old, it's actually like, but, uh, let's see, 15? I want to say it's like 15 years old. It's either 15 or 14 years old. I can't do maths at the moment. <laughs> but, yeah. Alright, now let's talk about the ratings. Nostalgic ratings. Um, my nostalgic rating will be a 9 out of 10. Just because it was my childhood Harry Potter game. The one I played the most. Never completed until now though. But I definitely played it the most out of all of them. Sure, there were two Harry Potter games I never played, which was Half Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows Part 2. I never played those two. But I played all the others. And this was one I kept going back to. And now, uh, the reason it's a 9 out of 10 isn't just because it was my favourite Harry Potter game, but it's also because of the freedom you had. It's the most open worldish Harry Potter game I played back then. I'm just glad the sort of so, just game being game. able to run around Hogwarts and have fun, not worry about the story whatsoever, it was just opening. Like, at the time I was six years old playing this game, and I could not believe the freedom I had just exploring the castle and grounds of Hogwarts. It was just amazing. So, for me, this game will always be one of my favourite, favourite games. Just because of the freedom it gave me when I was six. Right, now, that was my nostalgic rating of 9 out of 10. Now let's talk about what I would give this game if I was playing the game for the first time now. I would give it a 7 out of 10. And let me just break that down for you. The reason I would give it a 7 out of 10 is because the camera angles, you can't control the camera. In every game these days, you could control the camera with the right analog stick. But the right analog stick is actually how you use your spells on this game. So, you cannot control the camera whatsoever on this game. You walk around with the left arrow, uh, left analog stick. To control the camera, you literally have to turn. You literally have to turn your entire character like I am now. That is controlling the camera. That's moving the camera, so... It's, it has been a tr literal hell playing this game now just because you can't control the camera. 
You could be running up the hill from Hagrid's Park, wanting to go through the covered bridge, but you can't because you can't see the door until you turn your character. So that's one reason why it's a 7 out of 10. Another is because of the length of the story isn't as long as it should be considering of everything that happened in the movie and the book. But like I said it as my 9 out of 10 rating, that is actually a good thing considering the time this game came out. And because obviously I was 6 years old when I was playing this game, so having a short story that I didn't really care about was awesome. Even though I never completed the game, because I was too busy just running around the castle. But, if I was playing this game for the first time now, and having a short story about 5 hours long, it was a trouble. Like a 5 hour long story for a near enough 2 hour long movie, when a lot of things happened in that movie, and a lot more things happened in the book, that is a troubling Troubling situation to be in. But yes, nostalgic rating of a 9 out of 10. A brand new Eyes playing this game is a 7 out of 10. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review and this walkthrough series. If you did, hit the like button, turn the notification on, join the Wolfgang by hitting that subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, Wolf Spring Gaming is signing off.